the Oklahoma City Thunder have made a absolute statement. I think in game one, Wes um, came out winning by double digits, winning, creating garbage time in this game. And it, I, we're going to do five ways, five things that decided this game to dive in here. Number one for me, and, and that, this is a great show, so I want to turn it to you. Oklahoma City knows themselves, and they know exactly what they want to do. No matter the stage, no matter the moment, no matter the pressure, they understand what they are and how they want to play basketball. And they're the youngest one seed in a million years, right? With so, a with a with a dumb young head coach who's never been head coach before. For such a young team, the Thunder might be the most self assured team in the NBA. They know exactly what they want to do, what their weaknesses are, and how to compensate for them. They're not a team that is that tells you that they have no weaknesses. They acknowledge that they're a little bit thin, that they don't have as much size as some of these other teams, but they have practiced in how to compensate for that. Dallas threw some interesting defensive wrinkles at them in this game. They adjusted, Oklahoma City did, immediately. And when I say immediately, I mean immediately. So the big question going into the series was, how are the Mavericks going to defend or not defend Josh Giddy? And throughout the regular season, they put Gafford on Giddy quite a bit, or whoever their starting center was at the time, on Giddy, and just had him hang back into the paint and guard against the Shea Gilgis Alexander and Jalen Williams drives. But they started this game instead um, by having Luca guard Giddy and have Luca sort of be the rover and then keep Gafford on Chet Holmgren. And as soon as – and they realized this on the first possession. And on the second possession yep. of the game, they had Giddy initiate the offense, engage Luca high up on the floor, take the rover out of the paint, and they got uh, Luca then switched onto Shea, and then Shea was able to drive right by Luca. Uh for a layup that is immediate recognition immediate adjustment and immediate execution and it's why this team is so good it's why mark dagnall is the coach of the year because he has this team prepared in that way and it's why this team is so dangerous and then in the second half when dallas moved gafford back to giddy they pushed the holmgren button who yeah. was not as much of a factor in the first half and then took over in the second half and it felt like basically the entire game, Chris, that the Mavericks were scrambling to plug holes all game while the Thunder just paddled in unison like a great rowing team until until garbage time with three minutes left in the fourth quarter. OKC didn't overthink things on their own defense. They put their best defenders on Dallas's best players. You know, they had... Uh, Dort guard Luca. They had Jalen Williams guard Kyrie Irving. They didn't overthink it. Then they had Shea and Jalen Williams take uh, 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 take over down the stretch, and that was the game plan. And they do this every game, no matter who they play. They know exactly what they do, and they just do it. And it's remarkable again for such a young team to have this level of self awareness and be able to execute it on a game to game basis. I'll add to that by saying that it's amazing to me that Chet already looks comfortable in this environment. He doesn't look phased. He doesn't look like out, phys out physical or bothered by what's going on out there. He's hitting one leg fadeaway pull-up middies. He's getting to the rim. He's screaming. Chet is here and ready and doesn't look like he has any qualms about it, like being himself in this environment. For him, who is skinny, who is the the – the, re the center on a team that intentionally doesn't really rebound very well and doesn't really prioritize rebounding, for him to just be comfortable with that and do his thing and have a 19 and what, seven game against Dallas is mm -hmm. like, that. that's unbelievable. Like the only way that happens is if he is empowered to be that. That That's the beauty yeah. of the Thunder team. With three blocks and then impacted yeah. a number of other shots at the basket too. Um that kind of leads me to my, one of my takeaways from this game was Dallas really misses Maxi Kleber. Yeah. They didn't really have that guy to pull Chet away from the rim, right? And, and Chet was able to just drop back, hang back, did not care about Daniel Gafford out on the perimeter. They were playing drop on every nearly every pick and roll there was, and it really hurt Luka, and it really hurt Kyrie Irving. There was a play in the third or fourth quarter where Kyrie tried to do the Kyrie thing where he slithers and uses that crazy handle to get to the basket. And Chet just stood him up. Chet just put both hands up in the air. Kyrie had to force a, sh a shot at the end of the clock, and 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 that was it. Kyrie missed the contested look. And it's just it's pretty remarkable just seeing Chet hang back there and corral these guys who are trying to slither their way into him. 
Um, with and, and and you know having Kleber there in the in the first round series against the Clippers kind of changed that series. And now that he's out, they don't really have that lever to pull. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how they how they adjust because it does feel like they're going to have to find a way to get Chet out of the paint. And how do they do it? Do we see a little bit more small ball stuff going forward? Both. Neither team did anything crazy adjustment wise in this first game. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Jason Kidd, newly extended, congrats to Kidd. Um, good job, good job on using like, the Lakers as a stalking horse. You know, just good job by, by his agent. You know, <laughs> hey, it's 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 the playbook, man. Yeah, every coach has it. That's right. Um, do you go PJ Washington at the five? Like I do, I just wonder. And even if you do, does Chet say that's cool? I don't really care. If PJ Washington is like, we're not worried about like he can hit threes, but we're not worried about him beating us from three point range. You know, I just that's to me the thing that's keeping me up at night. If I'm Jason Kidd, is how do I get Chet away from the basket? Yeah, I don't think he's they're panicking um, with him. You know, like I think if it's PJ at the five, I th- I don't think there's super panic. I thought I mean it was notable to me that Tim Hardaway Jr. kind of makes a return in this game, plays 17 minutes. He didn't play, if I'm not mistaken, the last four games. Of the Clippers series, he played, a, I think, a total of like 21, 22 minutes in the first round. And I think to your point about spacing and just needing another shooter on the floor, they said, okay, we got to go back to Tim. He played 17 minutes. He took four threes. You know, didn't really have an impact. And I think we saw, Wes, that that's not going to – like there's not a – as much as the, another shooter could help, Klebo was giving them a very specific thing. He was get a very specific button to pull. Right run pick and roll, run pick and pop, have him stand in the corner, pull the big out. That's They don't have another option for that on this roster right now. Unless I, P.J. Washington at the five is really the only thing they could do. And even then, you know, is who's the fifth guy in that lineup to really maximize it? Is it a Hardaway? Is it Josh Green? Is it Dante Exum, who isn't really a shooter and Oklahoma City will ignore? There's not a great answer for Dallas to... to Without Kleba, there's right. not a good way for them to replace Kleba on their roster right now. There's not. I, I, at the end of the day, I'm not freaking out though. If I'm the Mavericks, like I don't. It's really easy to kind of see Game One and do exactly what we did with Celtics Cavs and be like, "Well, this is over." Yeah, it's not because in that sense, it is over. In this, it is not even close to over. Congrats to the Thunder, big time win, super impressive. But at like, I, I look at the box score just even and. Like, this was not a great Luka Doncic game. Six for 19 overall uh, shooting. One for eight from three-point range. Kyrie Irving, seven of 14 overall, um, but wasn't very impactful. A lot of those shots coming late uh, wasn't really making much of an impact th- through the first three quarters before this game kind of got away from Dallas. And then you look at overall uh, the shots that both teams were getting. You know, Oklahoma City did a good job getting to the rim. So did Dallas. I mean, it's not as if Dallas was not getting those shots at the rim. A lot of those shots were coming without Chet in the game, but Dallas got 23 shots at the rim. OKC got 27. Their mid-range shots, both teams, and I and I got the snapshot from cleaning the glass before mm-hmm. garbage time, so this is not kind yeah. of garbage time. Dallas and Oklahoma City both took 24 mid-range shots in this game. Dallas took uh, 31 three-pointers. Oklahoma City took 33 three-pointers. The Thunder just made a bunch of shots at home, and the Mavericks missed a bunch of shots, and I hate to bring the analysis down to that level, but the Mavericks are going to make more shots. Luka specifically is, is going to make more shots in this series. Like There's going to be a game that Luka just wins by himself because he's capable of doing that. We didn't see Luka and Kyrie, that two-man game, at full throttle in this game, and the Thunder definitely deserve a lot of credit for that. Like Lou Dort, Jalen Williams guarding those guys. Like The Thunder's decision to put size on Dallas's main scorers Definitely threw them for a loop a little bit. It's definitely a hurdle. But these guys are so talented that we know they're going to get over that hurdle, right? They're going to figure that part of it out. And once they do, this series is going to get really interesting. And that can happen as soon as I mean, I would expect it to happen in the next game. I would expect Luka, you know, like the the question about like the broadcast talked a lot about his knee. We don't know. Right, we don't we don't know. I think certainly maybe Dallas is, comes in a little more worn than OKC after OKC had a very easy first round. Maybe that matters in, in a game one more than any other game in the rest of the series. If Luca is feeling a little better game two, that makes a world of difference. You know, he was six and nineteen in this game. Didn't really have a lot of lift on his threes. Was one of eight. Still had nineteen nineteen and six. You know, if if he just makes some more twos and makes a couple more threes on top of that and gets the free throw line and, or makes his free throws. Like 
you kind of solve your problem right there. And this 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 was a close this thing because Dallas did, to their credit, come back in spurts. And guess who was at the driver of that? Luka Doncic. Like Luka drove that. So if Luka's right, which would be I think our next thing, Dallas is Dallas is fine. And I, I would expect a, a big Kyrie game in this series. He even if OKC did a really good job on him and is going to throw bigger wings in him, he is at some point just going to slither free and figure stuff out. Particularly if Luka gets going, I think the door opens for Kyrie to then be another thing for for OKC to kind of have to freak out about. Yeah, that's sort of the underrated part of the Kyrie Irving experience is now that he's sort of settled into not being the number one option, right? He tried to be that number one in Boston, finally sort of settled into being the number two in Brooklyn next to Kevin Durant, and then he's really kind of found that role, the best he's ever had it, and the best he's ever performed this role at since leaving LeBron in Cleveland, right? And, And Luka in so many ways embodies a lot of what LeBron does is Hand him the keys. He's going to create the good looks. As, as talented and as incredible as Kyrie Irving is, he doesn't create amazing looks on a possession-to-possession basis the way that Luka and, and LeBron do, right? And so when he's sort of the one that's being fed as opposed to doing the feeding, he becomes this maybe the greatest second-side attacker the league has ever seen. And But you do need... Luca to start mm-hmm. that engine, right? You do need him to start that engine to the offense in order for Kyrie to get going a little bit. It's going to happen. Now, you mentioned, is he right? The broadcaster, right? Like, they kept talking about his knee. Shea Gilgis Alexander, for the record, and every Thunder fan will probably say this, yeah. like, okay, like, Luca's knee, yeah. what about Shea's leg? Like, he's also dealing with some stuff, and that's fair. But, um, you know, if Luca's if Luca's not right, if, Luca, if, if Luca's injury is this bad, it's not going to matter whether they're playing the... Oklahoma City Thunder or the Houston Rockets in the playoffs. They were going to lose. Everything begins and ends with Luka for the Mavericks. So um, we'll see what happens. Throwing rocket there, shade out. Wow. Just post baby Jalen Green. Just throwing shade, Wes. What are we doing here? <laughs> I could have picked, picked another team. I was trying to stick yeah, to the region. Could have, you know, pissed Spurs? Spurs? I don't know. It's going to be in the playoffs. It'll be fun. All right. Uh, last thing I want to say about the Thunder. And this kind of goes, this brings us full circle with point one. I'm going to give you some names that are not the sexiest names in the world, but they're names that I think really matter to this team and, and how we understand this team, at least how I do. Kaysan Wallace, Aaron Wiggins, and Isaiah Joe. Combined in this game to be 7 of 11 from 3, played 23, 23, and 15 minutes. All played really aggressive defense. All know their role. All shoot it. Those are guys that they found in from various paths. First round pick, Isaiah Joe's off the scrap heap. Like Wiggins is a, a find him out of nowhere kind of guy. All guys that they have brought along with them as they've got to this point. Other teams would have just pushed these guys out and got a veteran in there and and someone like they would have made like the version of like a Pat Bev trade, right? And brought that guy in and put that kind of guy in the rotation. They in fact traded for Gordon Hayward at the trade deadline. Gordon Hayward played seven minutes in this playoff game. Gordon Hayward does not really matter to this team. He's just kind of there. What does matter is the guys that they brought along and guys that they, I think targeted specifically Wes to play within their style, play want to empower and are fitting in exactly what they need to do in the moment. You need those exact guys to be around to do that exact thing. Their identity obviously starts with Shea. It goes to J dub. It goes to Chet. It goes to what Dagonal is doing. It goes to door in the torture chamber, but it also is about them getting these role guys that know exactly what they're supposed to do and are brought into pretty specific things. And it works and accentuates everything the Thunder do. It's an advantage they are going to have, frankly, over like a lot of teams are going to play. I mean, it's an advantage I think they have over most of the teams. And to your point at the beginning of the show, this segment, about, okay, they know what they are more than anyone else maybe in the league. I think that's why. It's because they get role guys who fit exactly what they are. Yep, Isaiah Joe, three-point specialist. Case on Wallace, little mini yeah. Lou Dort, right? You go out there, do a lot of those things. Um, Aaron Wiggins... Just be the hustle guy. Deflect loose balls. I mean, he had a deflection on, uh, I can't remember who passed it, but it was it, maybe it might have been Luca on a pick and roll going to Gafford. Gafford kind of had an open, and, and Wiggins just took his right hand and just swatted it out of the way and then just kept mm-hmm. it moving. This team also doesn't celebrate a whole lot. Then, until then, the then they bark. Over. And then they, they go, do they do they then they waste. bark, and it's awesome. Right. They save it all. They save it all, but like in the, like they don't do any of this stuff in the middle of the game, man. It's so cool to watch. They're not there's not a lot of complaining to the refs. You see Luca talking to the ref every possession up and down. And sometimes I'm like I'm wondering, that's gotta take away from some 
It's taking two seconds away where you should be getting into your offense. A, a beat behind the play when you're supposed to be getting back on defense. And the Thunder don't do any of that. They don't complain to the refs. They don't celebrate themselves. They do, like, maybe a little bit, like, you see Shea. He'll just give you, like, a little, like, either two or a three on his fingers just to let you know which one it is that he scored. And then he just keeps it moving. And yeah. that's about he, it. He puts more uh, effort into the, so the, the pregame I, fits that are pretty audacious than he does, like, on-court emoting. Yeah, we had a we had like a, a brown. I don't know. I, yeah, look, I, there, there's a lot of things tonight. NBA players wear that I just have no business wearing or or think. But that that one just like Luca, just give me the suit. Like Luca and Luca and Jokic have like the suit thing down where I'm just like, let's just do that. LeBron when he wears a nice suit, I'm mm -hmm. just in on the suits. I'm not in on the weird leather like stuff. Yeah, uh, it's cool that Shea wears it. Congrats. I have zero envy about that yeah. at all. This is not a thing where I'm like, you know what? I Give wish me like I was an NBA player that. wearing like uh, a, car, a vintage Carhartt jacket and some workwear pants and we can talk, you know? <laughs> right, exactly. You're like, oh, yeah. where did you, you get that? Um, so, uh, look, I, 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 it, it's a great point and, it, and there are worthy names to bring up and it just helps when those guys aren't being relied on to be yeah. everything, right? With, don't, without looking at the box score, who do you think played more minutes tonight, Josh Green or Isaiah Joe, just based on the impact that they made? In I know the answer. I already looked at this, so like I right. okay. no, it's a but I, question. Isaiah okay. Joe did more in his minutes than Josh Green, and he played like two fewer minutes than Josh Green, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, he played ten okay. fewer minutes so, okay. than Josh Green. Even that that tells you I did so, I still apparently still I also can't point. read. Apparently. Yeah, that's cool. It's, that's great for me. <laughs> yeah. You've been outed. Um. <laughs> so you're like Gronk, but uh, it's it, it it's it's remarkable how much Dallas has to rely on, and I I don't mean this as shade to Josh Green, like he's a good player, Dante Axum, Tim Hardaway, they're fine players, but they kind of mm -hmm. need those guys. Where Oklahoma City thought like they don't really need Isaiah Joe or Aaron Wiggins. It's cool to have them; it helps, but it's not a requirement for them to win even playoff games. And th so this team is really deep. They've done an awesome job constructing this roster, but it starts at the top and everything trickles down to the bottom and they know exactly what they want to accomplish on every single possession. And it is the thing that uh, impresses me and terrifies me about this team. Last thing I'll say is if you want to, if you want one place where this game could just like math its way into more evenness, three point, three point shooting in this game, it's pretty even volume for yep. these teams. Dallas 34%, so below average. Oklahoma City, I think, buoyed by being at home and the energy they really clear the Fed off of 47.1%, including 50% on non-corner threes. If that if that gap just shrinks a little bit and Luka's a little better, you have yourself a game. It's not hard to see this still being super competitive and Dallas like winning game two, to be quite honest. And the other thing, if you're Dallas, that you're going to want to fix right away you can't foul Shea and Jalen Williams every single possession yeah. in the first half. And some of it was a little ticky-tack, I'll admit, but they weren't really doing themselves any favors either. Got to keep the hands out of the cookie jar. Four fouls for P.J. Washington, three for Daniel uh, Gafford, three for Derek Lively, and those are just the big men. A bunch, like Derek Jones Jr. had four. Josh Green had three. Um, Shea and, and, and Jay Will did a great job kind of baiting them into those fouls. They're going to have to clean that up. We're going to end there. This has been the Just Basketball Show for Wednesday, May 8th. I'm Chris Manning. That is Wes Goldberg. Wes and Brendan will have you on Friday covering more NBA playoff stuff. Anything else going on in, the, in between now and then? Maybe we'll get some. We're due for more like offseason slop, just as how this league works. So maybe that's coming Friday. But much more basketball to come. Subscribe on YouTube. Please review on your podcast platform of choice. If you've not already, find us on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, all those great places. Until next time, enjoy the hoops. Have a great rest of your day.